You don't. You only get the notice when you're not hosting. Okay. Supporting in private. I was waiting for the pop-up. Sorry. Don't mind me. Is is community where I eat? Are we um, all city council district 11 also, or I don't know. That's where you lose me. Or, do you happen to know? I think so. Yeah. I think that's what that map says. I just I was like wondering because I see the neighborhoods at the bottom and it says Kingsbridge Heights and isn't that where that like terrible daycare? Is? And that's like on here, but that didn't. But then there are like other city council members speaking up. Yeah, the one that's Manhattan and not. Uh, no, that's. Because some of okay. this, some of this over here, like more mm -hmm. towards. Mm -hmm. Belongs to Commonwealth Road. Oh, okay. I think you know it depends on when they redraw them. Things may change depending. Oh, on right, 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 because they redistrict it. Yeah. Um, and respect for folks' time, I'm going to get us going. Thank you all for joining, both in person and on Zoom. My name is Julia Gomez. I'm the chair of the Youth Committee. Um, I believe if I was doing the math right, this is my fourth year as chair. Uh, right before COVID, yes, that was right before. So I usually try to keep my meetings very concise, but it is probably going to be a little bit longer meeting tonight because I have to catch people up and explain some things, so please bear with me. Um, what we do usually is uh, ask folks to introduce themselves. I do not believe in forced family funds, so if you don't want to, you are not obligated to, but I think it's easier if we know um, who we're speaking to. Also, we don't really stand on ceremony very much here. Anyone who joins us is welcome to participate. I believe in lively discussion. Let you know, doesn't need to be said. Respectful, lively discussion, um, but all opinions are welcome. So, I've already said I'm Julia. If anyone else would like to introduce themselves, I will pause. Emily Hausman. Bias. Hi, how are you? I'm Julie Reyes. Good to see you guys. Hi, Julie. Mary Ellen Gibbs, Community Board 8. Uh, my Hi, name is Mary. Eleanor. I'm from the King's Retires Community Center. Eleanor. Hi, I'm Lisa Dowd, former Community Board member former chair of aging and secretary. There are more people coming in, so I will repeat myself. I apologize. I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Um, Hi, my name is Lilia Daskalova. I'm a director of Beacon 86 MMTC. Hello. So these, for those of you who just joined, we're just doing voluntary introductions. You don't have to. Um, it is encouraged. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kamar Kidd. I'm the program director at the Fort Independence Community Center um, for MMCC. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, according to the agenda, the next item of business is supposed to be the approval of the May minutes. Unfortunately, we don't have a quorum right now. We'll uh, put that to the side in hopes that somebody's running a little late and they'll join us and we can approve. If not, it'll roll over to the next meeting and we'll do May and September together. Um, my report is pretty succinct. Um, welcome. Very excited. Uh, who have been on the community board for a little while No, when I started I was the only member. Um, it was just me in a room one time. It was really kind of... <laughs> um, so I'm very excited by this. Um, the most pressing I that I do um, so I don't have to volunteer or say anything now if you would like to be a vice chair you know let me know I can discuss what that means for you generally it would just be assisting me if I can't make executive committee that you guys would go in my stead or 
um, and kind of just conferencing and processing ideas and helping me uh, stay on top of things. Um, we're a pretty easy committee here, so we um, and that's really the entire report at this point. Um, I will have more next month, kind of usually this is where I give updates on what I was supposed to follow up on at the end of the meeting or if something has happened in between meetings, but this summer there was not a ton for youth specifically. Um, any questions about that? Explaining comes in. So the next item is discussion of joint youth and aging meetings. Um, at the end of last year, an idea was proposed about merging some of the committees. Um, and one of the mergers that was proposed was youth, aging, and veterans, I believe. Uh, we had a joint meeting in May of, you know, to let people discuss their concerns, their thoughts, and everything else. And we tentatively decided we're going to start with, like, joint bi-monthly, quarterly meetings just to kind of see if uh, we could do that, if it works, if it makes sense, if it's too much, not enough, um, and we would revisit that. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the concerns at the time were the folks on the aging committee were concerned that the aging priority would not be used so was worried about losing voice. Um, so I said that my commitment to that would be, as you'll see on my agenda and you'll see it probably going forward, is like discussion of any of these things. If we don't have anything to discuss, we just move on to the next item, but I'm going to keep it as an agenda item. And also item six of intergenerational business. Um, so that's the plan. I do believe I would, well, I will discuss with you, but I was tentatively at the, we were thinking about October because in May we tentatively agreed to try an intergenerational event in support of the Veterans Committee, um, which is the next item of Memorial Grove. Um, so that was the idea that we'd have a joint meeting in October to kind of coordinate our efforts in supporting that event. Um, but again, we can, then we'd either take this meeting or the other, you know, we'll find a time that works for folks. We were in May. Did I miss anything about that? Um, any questions, comments, concerns about inter or joint meetings? I was kind of going to let Sergio the other day take item number six or five because uh, he's the chair of the Veterans Committee, but he's not able to join us tonight. Um, so every year. For veterans, I don't, if you don't know, in Van Cortlandt Park, sorry, there's a map in front of me that has park on it. Um, there is actually a grove of trees that are part of a memorial to veterans of this area who have fought in different wars. Um, and annually, there is an event where we remember them, and there's usually like the clean, clearing of the grove, cleaning it up, breaking. Um, there's usually multiple color guards, the names are red, there's, it's, uh, a woman who did it before the community board stepped up, I believe he's in his 90s, um, and he, he, we just started helping a couple years ago, or officially taking it over like two or three years ago. So um, I know that Sergio has a much better idea of the details of what needs to be done, but I do imagine um, it may be along the lines of maybe reaching out to some of the color, color guards. I believe it's usually maritime and Manhattan College's color guard that come out, one does like opening and one does closing. Um, and then the cadets usually participate in reading the names and such. Um, I do them, yes, please. Sorry, no. can I ask what day it's on? I'm just pulling out my <laughs> uh, mm, I don't know. Is it on Veterans Day? No, or? it's usually like, I believe it's the Sunday before usually, but um, I couldn't swear to it. So, my might be the 12th, but I think it's the um, It is outdoors and it is rain or shine. I will give that caveat out there. I think last year we were standing in the rain. Um, but um, so that is kind of the first 
item, you know, the first event we were going to try to do, youth doesn't really have a ton of events. I mean, the community centers do, and we try to support them and public, um, publicize those events, but um, us ourselves, we don't do as much. Um, questions about Memorial Grove? If I can't answer them, I will try to get the answer for you. Okay, moving right along here. We're just flying tonight. Um, are there any items from anyone on Zoom or in the room, of, like items you think are, would fall under intergenerational that we should be um, something? And again, this is going to stay, so if you're, nothing occurs to you now, that's absolutely fine. Um, any items on Zoom? I'm sorry, new to the party. No, it's fine. Um, can I ask example, some examples of projects or, or undertakings the youth committee has taken on before? A lot of the time what we do is just kind of try to bring, like I do a lot of listening to the mm -hmm. people in the community centers. Okay. Um, we did try, it was not a roaring success, to do like a resource fair. We mm -hmm. got some feedback that, um, you know, not everyone was sure what everybody else was doing, so I think one of the examples was like they were looking to start a mediation program and then found out that another center over here already had it, so then was that the best uh, use of So we were trying to do some of that. We did a virtual one in COVID kind of um, I still like the idea, but it's my idea, so I think it's a good idea. <laughs> um, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to stick with it if folks aren't as interested. I think we always think it's a good idea it's that it gets, it, organizing something like that gets a little um, involved. Um, and then it, do you join as, you go as a participant or as a presenter and those are different roles and what can you do or not do if you're there and um, that was a big thing. We also usually do, we accept and process nominations for the Yankee Leadership Award, which happens, there is a cash prize with that. It's actually really cool because it's actually written on a Yankees check. I'd never seen one before. I thought, right? Um, and then I, there's also usually Yankee tickets for. I think a lot of the centers get tickets for that. Um, that's kind of the highlight of the year. We also the community board eight as our own comeback board. That's something we were going to take up about <clears throat> trying to digitize or update the application and such, um, and it's just an acknowledgement. It, it's very broad of just like, youth who's overcome something, and like during COVID, that was everybody, so mm -hmm. we got, you know, but it does, part of it is to have like a resume, so it does try to get youth getting used to that, and letters of recommendation from the sponsoring agency, mm -hmm. and you know, um, the idea was, I believe, because this was a little before me, was to kind of get, youth ready for like college applications or job applications or whatever it is, like you have to follow, if it's not complete, it won't be reviewed and those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, that's a big umbrella. Yeah? Is youth defined by anybody under 18? Um, we've always kind of had a, uh, for like the Comeback Kid Award, I think we have an age limit. Other than that, we're kind of like, mm -hmm. You know, whatever makes the most sense, it usually kind of lines up with the programming that the community centers are doing. But I'm willing to, I'm pretty flexible about, you know, 26, sure, why not? Like, I tell people, I don't. Um, again, this is probably going to be really quick because a lot of, is there any old business that I was supposed to follow up on that we haven't quite, that I haven't yet? Anybody have any new business that they'd like to bring to the floor tonight? <laughs> this, I mean, my meetings are usually brief. This is, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to mess up your name. I apologize. Theresa Bell, you have your hand raised? Um, do I have to ask you to unmute? No, right? I'm sorry, couldn't find the unmute button. Oh. Hi, good evening, okay. everyone. My name is Arisbo. Sorry, my camera is not working this evening, but I work for Link. Hi, Mr. Brown. How are you? 
Um, so I work for Literacy Inc. I'm the community engagement specialist for Link. I know a couple of people here in the meeting. We're a nonprofit organization that works with kids zero to five. We're trying to bridge the gap with the um, literacy crisis. We mostly work with parents. We do workshops, um, how to engage their babies, their toddlers. So once, you know, the goal is once they go to school when they're five, they're up to date. They're at least on reading level. So um, Manny de los Santos office, Chris reached out and he's looking to see we can do a community event on Marble Hill. I just emailed Mr. Brown today this morning. Um, so we're trying to collaborate and see what we can do. You guys can collaborate in some way. It's still planning stages. We don't have a date. We don't have a time. But once we have all the information, I'll be more than happy if you guys can share your emails in the chat or send them directly to me. And I can loop everyone in to make it happen. Oh, so thank you for bringing that up. We're more than happy to spread the word. We'll put it on our Facebook. We'll send it to the blast, the youth list blast. Um, there is no chat on this Zoom. I don't know what happened to it. Um, so do you have the email for the board office? Yes. Okay. The, my best advice would be to send it to the board office, and they'll usually let me know that something's come in, and they are very good about posting it right away. So they'll put you in touch with me from there, and then we can figure out how we can be the best support to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, occurred to me. Um, so we don't have to meet here. We can meet where people are willing to host us. So community centers and pro if you guys want us or want to host us, happy to move meetings other way around the community board if people are comfortable with that. Um, like I know economic development, Nick is going around to several of the restaurants and establishments to support and also be where they are because it's hard for some of the business people to join these meetings. So happy to do that if folks want. We can always stay here. We're the only meeting on this day, so that's good. Um, there was something else and it flew out of my mind and my mama said that it must have been it was a lie, so I'm going <laughs> to... Um, Brett, you have your hand raised? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, since I know that this is sort of the uh, the beginning of the year for the community board, I just wanted to bring up just something to throw out there and to, I guess, think about is, you know, when I was in high school, when, when I was that young, I would typically try to avoid Riverdale absolutely just as much as possible. And everyone I spoke to that lived here was just Riverdale, lame, boring, but I would like to see it sort of improve for for kids, especially in high school, because I think that's when a lot of um, kids start to go on um, a bad path uh, or, or, or get into bad habits that follow with them into adulthood. Um, you know, it's a sort of um, a sort of lack of things to do here. But one of the uh, productive things that I found to do in high school was I, I was um, playing music and I, I would have a band and we would go to um, a music studio where you could rent out spaces. And it was relatively cheap back then enough that like a group of like four or five high school students can um, afford a studio that had a like a drum set and a keyboard and amplifiers to play in. And I'm not saying that, um, you know, some of these newer places would have to necessarily be that. But if there was a way to um, sort of cater to more creative outlets in the immediate neighborhood, I think that, um, you know, maybe that would bring more business to Riverdale. It would it would keep the um, the the younger students who are in community board aid from having to go miles and miles because you know I would spend a lot of my time in Queens. Um, and it, it would just be it would just be better for for um, high school kids in community board eight to have something like that within the bar, um, the boundaries of community board eight. Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, we want safe and supportive places for these for all people to go. Right? We all want to go somewhere that's safe and supportive of whatever we're doing, whether it's creative creatively our identities or any other piece of ourselves. 
Um, I do think that one of the things that I've heard from the community centers, and guys, correct me if I'm misrepresenting this, is that there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between the work that they're doing and we know about this much, I don't know if you can see very clearly this much of the work that they do um, and they're doing this much more in the background. So that's part of what we're t I'm trying to have this committee be is helping to expand what we know about the work that they're doing so that we can identify those gaps and then help them fill them as they are. But I do think they're probably doing a lot more than we're aware of all the time um, and I think that's kind of what I'm hoping we'll be able to help them getting, making sure I, most of you are still in your offices. I can see that and it's almost 8 o'clock at night and uh, you're, all the nods. Um, so, you know, I, I hear you. I just want to, part of what I want them to do is help effectively fill those voids and not, you know, duplicate things that already exist and I just knowledge gap. I w can I throw an idea? Always. So I, I wonder, I used to, um, up until a little while ago, I used to work at the Riverdale Y, mm -hmm. and we held a, um, the Riverdale Y ha housed a project called the Riverdale Jewish Partnership, which mm -hmm. housed like eight, the 18 Jewish organizations of Riverdale, and we had a community-wide calendar. So anything the Jewish community was doing got put on this community-wide calendar. I wonder if the youth committee could take some having a youth community eight or sorry community board eight calendar where all the community centers could send us like what was going on around there, so that this calendar is something we would be able to publicize. Does that sound like something that could happen and we would just, I, I, I'm new to this, I'm yeah. new to the game so I just, I'm not 100% sure who we would reach out, we would reach out to but I think like through different partners we could find out like where to put an email last and say like that for, sep for October the deadline is September 18th to like mm -hmm. submit anything and then to then put out the calendar again. Is that something that makes sense? Or that makes sense. My, my, tangible, yeah. my one concern is person power. Um, okay. who, who would do that? So my initial maybe, and don't laugh too hard. My family has a cozy calendar because we, I can't find my parents. They're retired now and now mm -hmm. they're never where I think they're going to be. So we have a family calendar where we put our here. things on it and then we can filter by person or um, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that might kind of be, I don't want to put too much on the office, especially because we're still mm -hmm. understaffed, totally. but I do think that's a great idea. And how do you guys feel about that? Because it's your, and does that seem like something that would help? So we will be, re essentially, we will be responsible for keeping it updated. So we're not, I'm not sure what it would look like in the end, but like having the community board kind of sponsor a youth-wide calendar every month and then somehow you guys would have to get that information to us, whether it's in emails that the board puts the calendar together, which I'm not sure they have the bandwidth for this second, mm -hmm. or like an online calendar that you guys would fill in and you could just blast. Yeah. I think that also they wouldn't necessarily need a... Uh, cut off, right? To marry both of the ideas is have each community center send each community center send us their calendar, and initially we just publicize each calendar from each community center, and then mm -hmm. eventually we bring it together into an right. entire community because that just makes it easier. We just basically have to they're responsible for sending us their calendar, and then we just publicize it to a larger audience. And eventually, when we have the bandwidth, then we can have our own community calendar that includes everything, including what we're doing and what everyone is doing, and just be transparent. Does that sound to folks? Not in, yeah. Okay. I um, think that's a good idea of, you know, to start us off, we could do large scales only. Um, so like community cleanups, um, like garden projects, stuff like that. And then from there, we can take it on a much more micro level. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, let me run it by the um, Farah and folks in the morning. 
just to kind of see if they have any thoughts as well, and I will follow up either email or, you know, hopefully before our next meeting, but by our next meeting, if not sooner, I'll have a more firm plan um, for how this works moving forward. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, maybe like flyers so we can share and then this way you guys can share out and whatever families find useful, they can reshare as well. Because for us, like for example, since we work with parents so much, we have WhatsApp groups. So anytime I find like, we work with Marble Hill Cornerstone. So anytime I see any after school program, any activity they have going on, we'll share the resource with our family. So it's not necessarily only our programs, but anything that as a community they could take advantage of and it works well. Yeah, so definitely send us any flyers or anything you guys have. The office is really good about, we have those, they have lists for each like interest thing. So they'll send it to the youth interest emails, but they'll also put it on the Facebook. We don't have Instagram or I don't believe we have Twitter. I might be confused about that. I know we did a social media thing a while ago, but we, that is something we do very regularly is you know put, put the flyers out there, but I think the calendar is the next level of that support in terms of here it is, and I, we could probably put it on the website, it shouldn't, or a link to it on the website so that people can check it when they do or when they um. I just think it would be amazing, like as a, a parent of young kids, if you could be like, on a Sunday, you're like, Saturday, you're like, oh, what's going on? And then you pull up the calendar and you're like, oh, this is going on at Big Cortland Park and this is going on at the library and this is going on whatever to all, yeah, to like all be in one place would be, would be great and or like filter by age. I, I don't know. It's like next level. Yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. No, I'm not going, I, that was a fictitious comment. <laughs> My mind went, okay, yeah. so if I put it, if I make it in Excel, then I was like, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. My mind went to data. I apologize. I won't drag you down that rabbit hole with me. Um, but, yeah, let's, let's see what we can get together for our first iteration and then subsequent how we can make it better and level it up as we go along. Um, anything else? All right, well, if no one has anything, I'm going to hang out for a little while in case, you know, there's something that maybe is for the whole group that you want to ask. Um, thank you for your evening or part of your evening to spend with me. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again in October. Well, good night. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, it goes to the cloud, and then they are, if yes, you'll receive an email. Okay,